Yeah, this is Paul Neal. I have uh, a model here from uh, one of my students and uh, he was doing his best to uh, do some work on it here and, and use procedural methods to model it. There's some issues with this though and I kind of wanted to address them just uh, overall as to uh, why there's, there's sort of better ways of doing this. First off, uh, you, know, you start with a circle uh, down at the bottom of the stack and uh, if we turn off the show end result, it's kind of a, not a good shape to start with because uh, when you go to the edit spline, which ovaled it out, uh, which you know gets us an oval shape, and then an edit poly, which could have been an extrude, what you don't get are any uh, edge faces across it. So you're going to have to deal with that. He's then shelled it, bent it, which is now bent all those triangles, and try to do the final editing. He's had to go in and um, you know put all the topology in it to get it to work because that topology didn't exist before that part so you're running into a lot of problems. Two, now you're trying to uh, model this bent over with the thickness the the shell should have been on the top of the stack as the last thing to do. So here's how I probably would have gone about it if you wanted to do it and try and keep it very procedural. Uh, I would have gone with a plane and uh, I'll just take those um, polygons down maybe down to uh, something simple like that to start with and drop this up at the top <clears throat> where it is and with the plane then I'm gonna start by tapering the sides in and get some of that top shape going so I'm gonna go in and uh, hit X and type in taper and taper it in and so what we want to do is we want to curve the sides uh, probably around the Y there we go um, and then we want to uh, straighten this out and curve the sides to straighten this out so what I do uh, right away is I grab the uh, top spinner the amount and I say copy animation paste it into the curve as a wire connect it up with a negative amount because they need to be negative from one another and say connect that way now I can just type um, dial that up without having to worry about it so this uh, center point too on the keyboard to get into the uh, uh, center point here I'm just going to bend that in and uh, move that back so it's uh, it's not uniform the way it's doing it it's a bit more at the front and again X and uh, taper again drop in another taper and this probably is on X this time but again I need a curve and I need them you know uh, opposite of each other again so I'm just going to do a copy animation and a paste wire with a negative amount and uh, so I can just do that quickly and adjust that as I need it to be. So you can see we're getting the, the shape going. Of course the order of the uh, modifiers will get you a different result depending on what you're looking for and, and what you really need. Um, so we're gonna have to go around and sort of play with these. I'm gonna show on end result so I can see what's happening. And now we're gonna need a bend and drop in a bend modifier and uh, I will bend it um, four and a half, probably gonna have to have a 90 on this, I'm assuming, probably in Y, there we go. And so I wanna bend that over. Now I'm bending it over again, I might want to uh, move my pivot backwards, the, the, the center point of it. And it looks like my plane needs to be uh, longer here. Um, and let's just go uh, X in here so you can kind of see that I'm trying to match this. Um, and get this to uh, to fit in there. So you can see that I've, I'm bending it over, but it's obviously not long enough. Don't bother scaling it or anything. Right down to my length, and it all updates nicely, which means I can go back down to my bend, which was supposed to be at the top. I just slid it to the top, and uh, I can bend that over some more. And again, play with my center point um, to make sure it goes in the right place. And it looks like the whole thing might need it to slide backwards now. So I can move that backwards a bit and drop it in there. X, another bend modifier. This time the bend modifier um, is going to be side to side. But you'll actually notice as I start bringing it in side to side, it's kind of tucking the corners in here, the shoulder bits in. So I want to put that before the previous one and it won't have that effect. Because it's happening uh, before that's happening. And again, I can go back and play with my tapers if I have to to, to get the, the shape and form right. Now one of the things you might notice on this is it has um, a flat spot on top um, so really it kind of needs to be up a little higher and uh, let's uh, unhide the rest of it again here and so it needs to probably be up a little higher. Um, I bend side to side which is this one 
should probably be a little more and it needs to be up a little higher and it looks like it might need to be a little bit wider and so it's going to take a little bit of adjusting at the uh, poly level after the fact but I'm going to get most of the way there just with a bunch of modeling here now it sits too high up he wanted this top piece flat up top here uh, so again let's just hide that off I'm actually going to add a, a volume select and in the volume select um, we're going to use um, uh, uh, vertex and uh, we're going to put that as a box uh, so that we have a, a box in here and I put it down at the bottom by mistake it's got to go at the top next volume select so that it actually puts a box and I'm going to move that box up and just say vert vertices at the top and then I'm going to turn on some soft selection not right to the edge and on top of that I'm going to stick um, an X-Form modifier and in the X-Form modifier I'm going to grab it and I'm going to scale it down so it flattens it out at that point point. and now you'll see actually we can easily go in and say well maybe there's not enough polygons in that so let's add some more if we want and make it look way, the way we need so there is a really fast and simple way of doing it. Now he has thickness on it, and so the last thing I'm going to do on the thickness on top is add the shell. Shell modifier, and of course uh, the shell by default is, is going up at this case, so what I'm going to do is zero out that one and just push the inside in down to uh, where he needs it and uh, give it some thickness, and the shell starts at the top. now. In uh, making sure this is unwrapped correctly, what's nice about this is that the uh, mapping here is actually mapping the inside, and you can get it to map the edges as well. Um, you know, uh, so it's there's different methods for getting the the edge mapping to uh, uh, try and work and, and get it better. So essentially, what you now have is a is a completely uh, modeled piece that's entirely procedural. It's a, it's a procedural model at this point. It can be changed up as needed. If we really needed to do some tweaks on it, we could easily do some tweaks on it and uh, throw, a, you know, collapse it down to an edible poly and uh, do some uh, pulling on it if we like. Now uh, we could cut it in half and use a uh, symmetry modifier on it in that case, so we only have to work on one side. But other than that, the rest of it's procedural to get it started. Mm -hmm.